In the front-end world, we all talk about the newest updates in established frameworks like Angular, and we mostly pay attention to cool new libraries that are changing the way we build web apps. However, if you ask me, the most important release of the last couple of years is actually Vit. I know, build tools are somewhat boring, and we all are taking them for granted, but there is a lot of hard work going into them. When you think about it, it is the likes of Vite and Webpack that allow you to build large app architectures without worrying about the underlying mess caused by serving your code to the browser. So, what's the deal with Vite, and why does it have such a rapid adoption rate in all big frameworks? After all, even though it is only two years old, Vite jumped into the first place in the state of JavaScript's build tools category, and even big players like React are considering dropping their own build and scaffolding tools in favor of Vite. In short, Vit is a build tool that aims to provide a faster and leaner development experience for modern web projects. It has two major components. A fast dev server leveraging native ES modules and other cool features such as hot module replacement, and a build tool that bundles your code using rollup and outputs highly optimized static assets for production. We'll get into more details regarding all the great features Vit has to offer, but, for a bit of context, let's first take a quick look at how web apps were developed, built, and sent to the browser over the years. In my experience, you can't really appreciate the great life we have as developers these days if you are not aware of the difficulties we had in the past. So, in the early days, the JavaScript problem was more than straightforward. The little JS that you would have used was added directly in the HTML template or loaded via script tag. If you were concerned about performance, maybe some CDN was added in the mix to deliver the content more efficiently. Fast forward a couple of years and your use of JavaScript probably increased a bit. More functionality was moved to the browser and, with it, various third-party libraries and in-house features were shipped to the browser as well. Due to the increased amount of data sent over the wire, the community started to focus more on performance and optimizing the JavaScript bundles. This is the era of toolkits such as Gulp and Grunt, which marked the first steps into this new direction of using built steps in front-end development. Note that at this time, front-end devs still didn't have a unified standard to handle modules in a JavaScript project. Some efforts such as CommonJS or a sync module definition were pretty popular at that time, but the whole process was still fairly messy. Web apps continued to grow in size and complexity, and the need for a module standard was pretty obvious. This finally happened with the release of ES2015. This is also the time Webpack became the de facto solution for bundling app assets together. Looking back, we've come a long way in this space. It's fairly common now to bundle not only the JavaScript, but also CSS and other static assets in distribution files served to the browser. There are various optimizations in place to ensure that related assets are grouped in shared chunks and served to the browsers only when necessary. On top of that, preprocessors such as SAS and languages like TypeScript are the norm in most projects. Tools like Webpack can easily handle all these associated compilation steps in their process as well. Getting back to today, Webpack is still widely used, but this tiny little tool called Vit is making a name for itself. If there is one thing you need to know about Vit is that it is extremely easy to work with. Just run npm create Vit, define a project name, and select one of the existing templates. Vit comes with TypeScript support out of the box, which, in my opinion, is a must these days. JavaScript is the most popular language in the world, and there are a lot of devs still preferring to work in vanilla JS, but the direction in the front-end space is more than clear. Everybody is slowly moving towards TypeScript. If you are not convinced, think about the new JavaScript runtimes like Bun or Dino, which come with native TypeScript support. This is also the case for most modern UI libraries and frameworks. Once you go through the setup, you'll end up with a straightforward self-explanatory project structure. Note here the vidconfig file, which is the main place where you can define various options or plugins. In this specific example, we can enable React in our project by simply registering the React plugin in the config. It's that easy. As a quick side note, Vit uses Rollup under the hood and share its plugin system and architecture. You can jump into the documentation section and read more about the available native, community, or custom build plugins. Getting back to Vit and TypeScript, one interesting detail is that, for performance reasons, Vit only transpiles TS files and does not perform type checking. In short, type checking can be done only when the compiler has a full understanding of all the files in your project. This means that whenever you are modifying a file, all other files need to be evaluated and checked again. In contrast, the transpilation process 
can be targeted to process only the file actively modified. So, of course, it is easier and faster for Vite to only look at the modified file when changes happen. However, you don't have to worry. This decision is not going to be a problem because most IDEs will check types for you and, as you'll see in a second, the speed gains are considerable. Since I am mentioning speed, let's take a quick look at Vite's dev server architecture. Vite improves the dev server start time by first dividing the modules in an application in two categories, dependencies and source code. Dependencies are plain JavaScript files not likely to change during development. All these are pre-bundled using a tool called ESBuild. Then, for the rest of the development process, these will be served as a bundle and will be excluded from other runtime Vite processes. The source code is something that will change more often since you are actively working on it. These files are served directly over ESM modules. As a consequence, the browser will handle the work of the bundler. While ESM modules are used in development, VIT still relies on bundles in production for efficiency reasons. Shipping unbundled ESM in production still has a lot of overhead because of network round trips and nested imports. If the ESM versus bundled approach is not clear, you'll find a great explanation of this one in the documentation. VIT also offers various other powerful features, but what I want to look at for the rest of this video is its server-side rendering support. This is yet another big topic in front-end world in recent years, and we are seeing more tools and libraries offering server-side rendering and multi-page architecture support. The shift in mindset is pretty clear, and I described in a past video why we need to explore other options besides single-page applications and client-side rendering. When building an SSR app, you'll likely want to have full control over your main server and decouple VIT from the production environment. It is therefore recommended to use VIT in middleware mode. This is the most common project structure when developing server-side rendering apps. The entry client file will be used to mount the app on DOM elements in the browser, while the entry server file renders the app using the framework's SSR capabilities. Inside the server.js file, we'll use express over Node.js to map incoming HTTP requests, and then we can simply use Vite APIs to render our UI components into static HTML sent as a response to the browser. If you found this video useful, please consider helping me find a YouTube algorithm by liking this video and subscribing to the channel. Until next time, thank you for watching.